Welcome back to my channel, Technology in the Future. The future of gaming is bright, and a big part of that future is the upcoming Nintendo Switch 2. We're all chomping at the bit to see what kind of amazing games will be gracing this next-gen console, but there's also the question of development times. Buckle up, because we're diving deep into the good, the bad, and the unique position Nintendo holds when it comes to crafting games for the Switch 2. The power-up and the slowdown. Let's face it, the current Switch is a powerhouse compared to the 3 pounds and Tabox 360 era, but the Switch 2 is aiming for something closer to a PlayStation 4 Pro or Xbox Series S. This raw power boost is fantastic for graphics and performance, but history tells us it often comes with a cost. Longer development times. Think about companies like Sony and Microsoft, where they jump to new hardware generations. Third-party support explodes, but their first-party titles sometimes get limited to one major release per generation. We even saw Grand Theft Auto skip an entire console generation. This wait can be brutal for gamers. The balancing act, remasters, new releases, and innovation. The news isn't all sunshine and rainbows. Development times are undeniably increasing, and even Nintendo isn't immune. Look at The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. It has the longest gap between mainline Zelda releases ever, pandemic aside. This game utilized the same base Hyrule as Breath of the Wild and still faced delays, launching over six years after its predecessor. However, there's a silver lining for Nintendo fans. While other companies might struggle to deliver a steady stream of first-party content, Nintendo's got a leg up. They're not just throwing money at the problem, they're strategically reinvesting profits from movies and theme parks into expanding their development teams. Plus, remember those two separate development branches Nintendo had? One for handheld, and one for home consoles? Well, those are now united under one roof, working towards a single unified platform the Switch 2. This removes the need for separate development cycles, potentially leading to a more consistent flow of games. The art of the port, a win for gamers? Nintendo understands the financial realities of development. That's why, especially towards the end of a console generation, like what we're seeing now with the Switch, they often introduce ports and remasters. Donkey Kong Country HD and the recent Luigi's Mansion 2 are prime examples. These ports and remasters can be a double-edged sword. On one hand, they might feel like a bit of a cop-out, but on the other hand, they introduce beloved handheld titles to a whole new audience who can finally experience them on their TVs. As someone who loves playing on a big screen, the idea of an HD remaster of a classic 3DS game is a win in my book. Nintendo's advantage, a multi-studio force. Here's where Nintendo shines. They have a unique advantage. Multiple studios working on a variety of projects. Some studios tackle smaller, innovative titles, while others crank out the big AAA experiences. This allows them to potentially maintain a more consistent release schedule, even with the longer development cycles of the Switch 2. We might see some extended gaps between mainline titles like Mario, Zelda, Animal Crossing, or Smash Bros, but Nintendo seems poised to fill those gaps with smaller releases. Imagine, you're not stuck waiting five or seven years for the next Zelda. Instead, you might get a fantastic new top-down adventure like Echoes of Wisdom to tide you over. Nintendo's Future – A Calculated Approach Nintendo is aware of the development time challenge and seems to be taking calculated steps to address it. Here's what I predict. We'll see good quality content released at an acceptable pace, hopefully with minimal gaps between major first-party releases. Development times will naturally increase, but hopefully not to an excruciating degree. We might not just get one mainline Mario or Zelda per generation, but potentially a couple of installments each. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. How do you feel about Nintendo's approach to development times? Will they be able to maintain a strong software lineup for the Switch 2 launch and beyond? Or do you foresee some dry spells in the future? Share your thoughts, and remember, whether we agree or disagree, the discussion is what keeps the gaming community thriving. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Until next time, thanks for watching.